Welcome! Happy Friday! Oh my goodness, that feels so good to say out loud. It's been a long week. How is everybody else? How are you guys doing? We have Gemma here, and Darla's with us, and Piston is somewhere. I have a, a funny story, I guess. I'll see if it makes its way into today. Let's see who's here today. Jackie says, greetings, lovelies. Hi, Nancy. Hello, April. Samantha, good morning. And Violet. Ciao, Bonnie. Hello, Roseanne, Michelle, Patty, Nicole. Good morning, Tam. Good afternoon, Jenny. Hi, Angel. Good morning, Jackie, Tasha. Hello, Catherine and Kelsey. Hello, Elena. Michelle My Bell says, yay for Aries season. Almost my birthday, too. I love it. I really love this spring time. Uh, but we're having a bit of a snowstorm in northern Illinois today. It was, it's funny. It is funny. My husband works for the village, um, so he's one of the, the plow people, so he gets called in for stuff like this. And this whole season has just been like spit. And so the big joke at work is that they're going to get called in to catch the snow before it hits the ground because there's been like nothing. Um, he didn't have to go in overnight, but one of his coworker friends did. And I was expecting to wake up to nothing, which I did. But now it's like downpouring. There's a decent inch out there. So interesting. Lori's experiencing snow in southern Wisconsin. Christine's bringing the sunshine. Good morning, Greg. Lori, so much for spring. You know, we always get that fake spring. We always get that teaser. We had like a week of 70s and then it went down and yeah, whatever. Everything always works out, right? Everything is always happening in divine timing. Good morning, Amber. Christine, happy Friday. Christine says hi to all of you guys. Gemma's the only one that cares right now. The rest are sleeping. <laughs> Violet says, we had 70 degrees last week and snow flurries on the first day of spring, 35 yesterday. Are you in the Midwest? That sounds like Midwest weather. Tam, four inches overnight in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Jackie wishes you were getting as much snow as me. I know you are. <laughs> you can have it. Violet's in New York. Oh, interesting. I didn't realize the weather was so, so crazy over there. Good morning, Suzanne. Um, so how have you guys been enjoying your Aries season? We're a few days into Aries season. Hello, Michelle from Washington, D.C. Looks like Tam and Nicole are in the same city. Greg, quite chilly here in Rochester. Christine had flurries earlier in the week, 70s last week too. Yeah, you're over in Pennsylvania. Must have had that same weather pattern as New York. Crazy. So, um, yeah, how is Aries season going for you guys? We're, I know we're just a few days in, um, but Pisces season was all about surrender. Letting things go. I was about to say giving up. It's not the energy of giving up. It's the energy of surrender, saying, I can't take this any farther. But now we're walking into Aries season. It's all about new beginnings acting from the strong place of I am. So this is so. Samantha's not enjoying airy season so far. Hi, Colleen from Nova Scotia. Becca says I've surrendered and my heart is filled with love. That's lovely. Melissa's talk about snow in Colorado. Amber had a revelation, tried a totally different tactic and it got me where I wanted to be. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? Kiana says your Aries season has started off strong, beautiful. Tasha's experienced death and rebirth. Melissa is in that same. You tried something totally different. Had a revelation. Jenny's still waiting for the fire to start. Exhausted from all the releasing. Yeah, I kind of feel that too. Kiana passed an exam yesterday after preparing for months. So grateful and excited. Love it, love it. Michelle feels lots of newness on the way. Yes, yes. Hello, Melinda. So I have three Aries offerings that I can give you guys if you're not yet 
fully in the Aries energy. I always make a Spotify playlist for the Zodiac season, um, and I put them, they're free, I put them in my link tree. So if you want to listen to music that's all about starting things, being a warrior, knowing who you are, being by yourself, those are all Aries themes. So just hop into my link tree, or I'm sure you can just search my name on Spotify to find all the playlists. Um, but yeah, they're just fun uh, to get you in the energy of the season. Uh, secondly, I thought that this was going to take much longer, and it technically is. So I promised you guys that I was going to create a course for each Zodiac season this year. And I had so much going on in my life, and I thought I was going to be late to post the Aries. And I posted it on, what was it, Monday or Wednesday? I don't remember. I posted it on Wednesday, and I was flabbergasted that I got the shareable link right away. So it's not live on my teacher profile yet, but I did post um, an Embody Astrology Aries season course on Insight Timer. If you are in our spiritual community, the group that I have on Insight Timer, I did post the link there. So I see that there's already a few students in the course. Let me know if that's one of you guys. Let me know if you've been able to access it. It looks like it's live if you click the link, but it should be live in a few days if it's not yet. But this course goes deep into Aries energy. I describe the archetype, the symbol, the tarot correlation, the body part, all the zodiac information. And then I offer you an embodiment technique to bring Aries energy into your life while it is so abundant in the universe. So keep your eye out for all of those. Those are going to be coming month by month throughout this year. The last Aries offering I have for you guys is my I Am ritual. I think we did this right around New Year's. I feel like it was like one of the first few days of January that I hosted this I Am ritual here on Insight Timer. We visualized our dream reality and then we created four small realistic rituals to bring into our daily lives to call that life into existence. So the link for that, if you want to purchase that for $8, um, it's also in my link tree. So if you want a refresh, if you want to re-envision the version of yourself that you desire to be, that's very much Aries energy to know this is who I am, this is what I stand for, this is what I'm going to act like. So those are the three things, Aries playlist, Embody Astrology, Aries course, I am ritual all very Aries. Oh, and one last thing about that Embody Astrology course, the Aries course. On Insight Timer, I'm only able to upload audio courses, but I do have this whole slide presentation with ecstatic dance and everything. So I am about to be posting the video version on my Patreon page. So keep an eye out for that. I'll let you guys know when that is live. Um, but that comes with the blooper reel as well because I don't care anymore and I love being authentic. So I'm showing you guys everything that goes into me trying to make an astrology course. It's a good time. It's a good time. So today I want to discuss two topics. This session is titled Mars and Pisces. So we'll get to that in a moment. But I want to bring attention to the conjunction that happened yesterday between Venus and Saturn at 12 degrees of Pisces. I'm just reading the, the chat real quick. Cool, Lucy. Yeah, try clicking on the link in our spiritual community for that course and see if that works. Beautiful, beautiful. Is the IT course, are you available to respond to questions? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, ask your questions in the course and I can get back to you. So yesterday, Venus and Saturn met up at 12 degrees of Pisces. So for those of you who are in my current Embody Astrology Lunar Events group, we met yesterday and I talked all about how this Venus-Saturn conjunction plays a big role in the upcoming full moon lunar eclipse on Monday. But yesterday was the day that this conjunction became exact. Venus represents our values. Saturn represents our limits. Pisces represents surrender. 
So you might remember within the last few weeks, I talked about how Saturn is now in the second decan of Pisces. He's moved into the second little grouping of 10 degrees. So Saturn is now feeling more apt to surrender. In the first decan, Saturn was attempting to impose his control over surrender. Now in the second decan, Saturn is more willing to surrender his control. So this conjunction between Venus and Saturn yesterday shows us the point of releasing control, the, the reason behind releasing control, letting go and letting God, letting things run their course. And I wanted to make note of this conjunction, especially in retrospect, because I was wondering if any of you guys found yourselves releasing control in any way yesterday or Thursday, or maybe planning on dropping something today, letting go of control, feeling into the why behind releasing control. April, yep. Karen, yes, right away, instantly. Greg, totally. So I love sharing personal stories. Um, I noticed this aspect in my life only in retrospect. So I've mentioned a couple of times here that I train Taekwondo and it was part of my life seven years ago, but I stepped away and I only returned back this past September. There's a tournament tomorrow and there's a long story behind it, but it's an important tournament for my relationship with my main instructor. And my life for the last two months has been absolutely turbulent, bonkers. I've been slacking on training. I've only been going when I actually have the energy to go and that hasn't been very often. So logically, it would look beneficial for me to back out. I'm not prepared for this tournament. I haven't been training. But with this Venus-Saturn conjunction in Pisces, I wasn't aware of this yesterday. This was, I looked at it in retrospect and I was like, oh, that was that conjunction. Yesterday, I was going back and forth. Should I do it? Should I give up? Is it worth it? Do I have to remain in control of the situation? And I found myself just throwing my hands up and saying, it could be worse. There's nothing to lose. I might as well give it a shot. So I surrendered to the fear of not being prepared. The part inside of my brain that tells me I'm not ready that my competitors have trained longer and harder. But what it came down to is that's not what matters. Winning is not the ultimate goal. I mean, don't get me wrong, it would be nice to bring home a gold medal. But what I found yesterday was the Venus value behind the mind games, the value behind the tangible medal. It's all about the relationship building experience and a measurement of my growth, watching myself progress. So I'll report to you guys how that all turns out when I'm back here on Monday. Um, but I, I see a lot of you guys had something that you surrendered control to yesterday. Wow, yeah, Melissa, Leah, Deborah, Christy, Becky. Becca, all your regular Insight Timer classes were canceled yesterday? Say what? Greg realized I needed to let go of trying to manage my elderly friend's memory and nutritional challenges. Need to focus on my activities and just being lovingly helpful to her. I feel that, Greg. Thank you, guys. Nancy says you go, girl. Natasha, the fact that you're attempting is success already. You'll be a winner to yourself for participating. Thanks, Becca. Um, so I just, I love sharing those kind of stories so that you can try to find that similar energy in your life to, to have that realistic example of what the heck this astrology energy means. So yeah, was there something that you let go of because you found the deeper value behind the, the front part, you know what I'm saying? So what we're actually here to talk about later today, March 22nd, Mars will enter Pisces, and he will remain in Pisces until April 30th. Mars is our planet of action, ambition, motivation. Mars represents what drives us. 
And I've been focusing so much on the surrender aspect of Pisces, but there's a lot more to the sign. There's a lot more to all of the signs. Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. It holds a ton of wisdom. It's seen it all. It's experienced it all. And being a water sign, it knows how beneficial emotions are. So Mars and Pisces can give us the energy to act from an evolved sense of emotion, to be less reactive, to, to feel the emotions and use them to your highest benefit, to use more of that King of Cups energy. If you're not familiar with the tarot, the King of Cups is the last card in the suit related to water. Water represents emotions and intuition. The King represents mastery. So this King of Cups energy that I'm feeling from Mars and Pisces, emotional intelligence, patience, experience, emotional experience, leadership experience, stability, and creativity. Mars represents the divine masculine. And Pisces, in my opinion, is the most complex feminine sign of the zodiac. So with Mars in Pisces, I feel such a delicate divine balance of masculine and feminine. It feels like Mars is bringing the container for the mutable waters of Pisces. And these emotions, the water, has full freedom to move and play and splash around with the protection of Mars's masculinity. I hope this is making sense. So what I'm feeling during this time of Mars and Pisces, March 22nd to April 30th, I'm feeling more of a sense of safety and protection to truly express whatever that expression looks like. This energy will amplify during the few days surrounding April 10th. That's when Mars and Saturn will come together in Pisces. So around that time, you may feel a duty, a Saturn responsibility to express certain emotions, a divine responsibility. But there's no need to worry about that yet. It's only March 22nd. I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, by that point, we'll have already started our Mercury retrograde. By that point, we'll have already experienced both of these upcoming eclipses. Um, and that's what I'm going to be talking about on Monday, is Monday's full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. So actually, that's, that's pretty beautiful. And I didn't think about that yesterday when I was talking with my Embody Astrology people. It's... This lunar eclipse that I'll talk more deeply about on Monday, this lunar eclipse is, is a full time of lunacy, right? Full moons create lunacy, heightened emotions. And this is an eclipse, so it's a much bigger monumental feel. But here we have Mars in Pisces. I feel like Mars is just that big bear hug around our inner child, around this little emotional being that doesn't know what to do with its emotions. Mars and Pisces really gives me that feeling of like, it's okay to, to say what you have to say, to feel what you have to feel. It feels so protective. So that's what I wanted to highlight today, is that Mars is helping us express what needs to be expressed for a little bit over the next month. Sophia says, sometimes we release control just to realize we never had it and that's okay. Yep. Absolutely. You're releasing the desire to control, the thought that you could be controlling. Sophia mentioned that there were 108 here. Greg, all sounds cool to me. When will Mars be at or near five degrees? That's my son Mars conjunction. Just because you asked. And I have my ephemeris handy. Let me see. We're in March. Looking at Mars. Mar uh, March 30th. March 30th. Mars will be at five degrees, Greg. Greg, I mean, Christine pulled the white buffalo card today. Abundance, security, and balance. 
Love that. Becca says, chills with excitement. It seems it doesn't get better than this, does it? Oh, you just wait. You just wait. I, uh, I've been talking about this for a while. I feel like this is the turning point of blessings this year. Um, this comes from, I do a, a yearly tarot spread every January. I pull one card per month. January, February, March were difficult struggle cards. April through December, I got all the tens. I got all the major arcanas that are beautiful. It's all just like so good. April through December. Um, other astrologers are talking about how hot of a month April is going to be. And you, you guys know me. I pretty much go day by day. I have an idea of what's coming, but I really like to dig into what's happening right now. So I haven't done my own research to like believe everything they're talking about. But what I can tell you is the upcoming Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that's going to happen the end of April, I believe the 20th. It's happening at 20 or 21 degrees of Taurus. That is just going to lighten so many loads for us. Such unexpected resources dropping into our life like a beautiful, magical little being. Um, so, Becca, I do think it gets better than this. I, I think it's going to absolutely continue to get better than this for the rest of the year. Christine, does one still get the benefits of the eclipse if it's out of the country? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the eclipse is because the sun and the, it's a, it's a full moon lunar eclipse. So the sun and the moon are opposite of each other, which is a full moon anytime. And the moon is within 10 degrees of the south node. So that's what makes it an eclipse. So that's actually a really good question. If you're living in, or if you will be in the path of totality, that might be more amplified. That's something I've never really thought about. But the day of the eclipse, the energies are so prevalent. So absolutely. Suzanne says, personally, I feel so much better than I did in January. Yep. Melissa, just yesterday, my son broke his silence with me after two months of shutting me out. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh, Christine, you're going on a human design retreat in Australia? That sounds like a dream trip. I'm so happy for you. Melissa had to let go of control and just let him come to me. Yes. Yes. You drop the illusion that you have control and then you allow the universe to surprise you. It happened with your son. It can happen with anything. The date of the eclipse, Amber, is Monday, March 25th. It is going to happen before we hop on Insight Timer. It's happening at 2.01 a.m. Central Time. Angel, you're in the path of the, the Aries solar eclipse. Yeah, I was I was referring to the, the 25th, I guess. I don't know. Whoever asked the question, Christine asked the question. I don't know. Um, Bonnie will have to report to us. Yeah, Bonnie lives right in the, the path of totality as well. So Mars in Pisces is giving us divine protection in order to express so we're going to use Ask Your Guides to ask, what is Mars asking us to express? What is Mars asking us to express? And so I guess the time limit for this reading will be from now until April 30th. So over the next month and a week, what is Mars asking us to express? So if I didn't say it, feel free to send your energy into this deck. Excuse me, someone just let go of something. I always do group readings and I always intend that the readings serve the highest good of all involved. I, I do a whole little ritual before I even come on live here. Um, and I, I actually intend that these cards work for the divine benefit of all involved. So if you're asking a question that regards another person, my intention is that the other person also receives what is in alignment with their highest good as well. So just know that with all of these cards also. Everything's all about intention, guides. I called you guys guides. I just said everything's all about intentions, guides. Maybe you guys are my guides. With these group readings, the whole message is for everyone. Okay, so just know that this whole reading is important for you. 
After the three cards come out, I'm going to show you the backs of the cards. So you'll see the same image three times. It's the card back. And if a certain card feels shit, <laughs> I got four cards. I don't like when that happens. We're doing four cards today. If a certain card feels um, special, different, if something in your environment changes, if your stomach growls, if your dog barks, if your cat jumps on your lap, if anything changes, that could just be a message from the universe that that card holds an extra importance for you. So we're asking, what is Mars asking us to express? And now I did get four cards from this deck. I do want to pull from my second deck later too. We'll see how today goes. I might have to rush it a little bit, but um, I'm only going to show you the backs of the three because the three came out face down and the fourth one came out face up. So the fourth one is absolutely for everyone. There's no question about that. So I'm only going to show you the three cards. The fourth one from this deck will be like a bonus. And then we're going to pull from our second deck to ask a culminating question as well. April, lots of four showing up for me lately. That's stability. Four legs on a table, four legs on a chair. It's the ultimate stability. All right, so what is Mars asking us to express? Here's the back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. And I'll hold them up one more time just in case, but let us know in the chat which cards are resonating with you. What is Mars asking us to express? Back of card number one. Back of card number two. In the back of card number three. Let's see who's working with what. Jackie, two and three. Lucy's already feeling four. My chat just jumped. Nancy, four. And one and four. Karen, three has been showing up for you. Leah, all three. Christine, two chills. One and three. Greg, all three, please and thanks. It's too long to explain, Greg, but number one is for from me to you. Tracy, two. Christine, two. Tasha, three. Michelle, three. Karen, three. Deborah, two and three. Deborah, three. Patty, card two. The bottom started. The bottom seemed to be dancing. The bottom stars seemed to be dancing. Cute. Yvonne, two and three. Nancy, two and four. Eleanor, two and three. Becca, two. Frankie, two. Ning, one. Elisa, all three. Angel, two. April, two. Louisa, one. Jenny, one. Nicole, all. Rachel, one. Violet, two. Chantel, all three. Suzanne, all, but maybe one the most. My dog yawned. Melinda, I think all three, but maybe only two. April, all and extra card. Greg, one made you cough. Heather, three. Samantha, same for you. You also coughed on number one. Um, Greg, the second time I held up card number one, I think it was Sophia. She typed your name in the chat and my eyes went right to it. So that's what I, that's why I was saying that. Lori, three strongly and others. Cool. So what is Mars asking us to express? Card number one celebration. It's card number 14. And this comes from your joy guides. The keywords are alignment, harvest, bonding, marriage. I don't know what I think it's Gemma. One of the dogs just started snoring a lot. You're entering a period of great expansion and celebration. Your joy guides are at hand ushering you into a season of abundance, celebration, and hospitality. You're loved, accepted, and trusted by those around you. This is a time when life gives back to you. 
You may become engaged, get married, receive a promotion, land a deal, or just get a long-awaited lucky break. Whatever you desire, your joy guides are urging you to prepare for because it's surely coming. Realize that as life's tides turn your way, the soon-to-become-realized positive flow of events isn't just a fluke or an accident or just the luck of the draw. Rather, it's the natural outcome of your unwavering efforts and commitment to your dreams and goals. Your joy guides message? Plan for the party. You'll soon have reason to celebrate. So what is Mars asking us to express is our true joy, gratitude, and appreciation for all the wonderful things that are about to drop in our lap. And what came up for me during this card is that oh, the universe is always giving us blessings. The universe is always giving us good things. But if we don't feel truly worthy to accept it, we sabotage it. We say, oh, this is too good to be true. Oh, this must not be for me. Oh, this must be a fleeting thing. This must be a fluke. This must be an accident. But this card is so strongly saying that you've been working your ass off. <laughs> you've been doing the work. You've been putting in the hours. You've been putting in the dedication, heart, sweat, tears. And something's about to come for you to pay off. Mars wants you to just say thank you and be grateful and celebrate and enjoy it. You've earned it. You've earned it. It's okay to enjoy it. Greg, okay, thank God. Melissa loves this. Greg, plan for the party. Suzanne, you have guests coming tonight. Enjoy it. Celebrate. You don't need to overanalyze, overthink, any of that stuff. Melinda, what a wonderful message. Jenny, oh, thank you. I love it. Melinda loves it. Jennifer just popped in and this is what I heard. What are you guys celebrating? What are you guys enjoying in your life right now? Especially for the next month. Mars in Pisces. He's not even there yet. Mars is still in Aquarius for a few hours. But Mars in Pisces is holding you. He's saying, I'm not going to let anything take this away. I'm not going to let you lose out on these things. They're yours. Claim them. They're yours. Quick anecdote, because I've been wanting to share this with you guys and I haven't. So in the summer of 2021, right when I launched my business, yeah, wow, um, I saw an ad on Facebook for this thing called the Opus Soundbed, and it is a vibrational healing bed that is synchronized with an app, and it's all just like so magical, and it, it pumps vibrations, healing vibrations into your body. And this was when I was literally just starting to give Reiki sessions to people and I was a, a newbie and I had no idea what I was doing. But I was like, you know what? I think this is gonna be really cool. I could probably use this to heal people. So I put down my deposit. Years went by. <laughs> I don't think I paid for the bed until this past June of 2023. So I was just sitting on that deposit for two years. It's a startup company. So I had to play with my trust I had to think, am I getting scammed? Am I not? Should I back out now? Should I not? Then this past June, I paid for the bed. I gave them my full payment. It is probably the most expensive thing I'd ever done. And I was like, you know what? It's beneficial. I'm just going to throw it out there. And then it was supposed to ship in November. Actually, it was supposed to ship in October, then November, then December, then February. And I'm like, I just gave this company so much money and there's scam reviews all over the internet and I was getting so nervous about it. Like, oh, should I cancel it? Should I get my money back? Uh, but I just trusted, I just knew. It arrived at my house on Monday and I went through the, the guilt. I, I couldn't celebrate right away. I went through the guilt. Do I really need to be spending my money on this thing? That, like, I just backed away from doing single sessions, so I'm not having people come over anymore. Um, I, I'm not doing Reiki anymore, so I'm not serving people in that healing manner anymore. I'm doing coaching and teaching. So, like, what the hell am I doing with this bet? Who am I to have this cool-ass thing that I can't use to help other people is, is where I went with this. Um, 
and I've used it a handful of times. It's amazing. I've pulled tarot cards on it to ask, like, what is this? Why is this here in my house? What is this doing for me? And what I got <laughs> is that I've been busting my ass for years and it's okay to celebrate this thing that I've wanted for so long. It's here. It's already paid for. It's already delivered. It's here. Jackie, just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. So where might you be sabotaging yourself saying, I don't deserve this. Someone else should have this. This isn't for me. I haven't earned this. Yes. It's all poppycock. It's all poppycock. Just enjoy it. It's in your life because you created it, because you brought it in. So just enjoy. Celebrating all the hard work coming to fruition. Yes. Who are you not to be? That's something that we got to remember to ask ourselves, right? Samantha, can we come over? Um, no, I'm okay with saying no now. I don't want people in my space not anymore. This is my space. Um, have I tried it yet? Yeah, I've used it every day, multiple times a day. I've gotten my husband on the thing. I want like my family to come over and use it. It's, it's so cool that I'm trying to convince myself that I should return it because I don't think I'm worthy of having this super expensive piece of equipment that's just for me, you know? But this card is validation for that kind of stuff. Yes. Melinda, thank you. She says, I love your stories. I still need that reassurance sometimes because I often feel like I'm just blabbing about myself. Maybe the dogs would like it too. I think it's way too intense for the dogs. Jackie, I'm like 99% sure I'm gonna keep this bed. I only, I have, whatever, whatever, pretty sure. No, the dogs don't enjoy it. It's definitely made for humans. It's a, um, Lucy, it's a sound bed. So it's this like six foot long bed. Um, and there's five different vibrational centers. So your, your feet, your legs, your root, your belly, your heart, or no, your legs, your root, belly, heart, head. Um, and it, it's synced up with this app where they have these healing, um, what are they called? Like binaural beat tracks, um, they're meditative music tracks. It's an extremely immersive experience. And you, you listen and you go on this journey with your audio. I always wear an eye mask so I can do my own visualization. And then the, the bed vibrates at different places at different times at different intensities. It's like the coolest thing. It's like the coolest thing. And it reminds me of like, when I was a kid, I used to really love being by marching bands just because I could hear the drums in my heart. And like, I really liked just, I love going to rock concerts because you could just feel the music in you. That's what it's like. Michelle has used one, they're amazing. Becca, your real life stories bring trust and more. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for saying that, Becca. These things available these days never cease to amaze me. Yeah, yeah. Bonnie, are they still selling them? Yeah, they're still in like the startup phase. So it is, um, I think it's still that that thing where you got to throw your, down your deposit. Who knows when they're going to send it? But it's a legit company. It's, a, it's an amazing product that they really wanted to put a lot of effort into. So I see now why it took me two and a half years it's the long, sometimes you guys got to play the long game and then celebrate what actually comes of it. Opus, O-P-U-S, sound bed. We'll get, we'll get to the other cards, guys, I promise. I got really excited to talk about that. Suzanne, I've been taking art and music classes through extension courses. Feel a little guilty, so indulgent. What is this for? But I'm loving being so creative so much, really opening some things up, doing things I like to do as a child. Yes, that energy has been coming up for me too. How do I hang out with my inner child? Melinda, listen to yourself, Jackie. You definitely have to keep it. I honestly think this card is what I needed to... I don't know. I got to go through my emotional wave still. Guys, I have an emotional authority. I gotta. I can't rush my decisions. I'm feeling like I'm 90% there. I just got to be sure. Cool. All right. Thank you, guys. So Mars is asking us to express our celebration. What are you maybe afraid to celebrate in your life? 
own it. You created it. You brought it in. You did the work. Just freaking enjoy it. What else is Mars asking us to celebrate? What? No. <laughs> what else is Mars asking us to express? Mars in Pisces, March 22nd through April 30th. Mars is asking us to express boredom. Card number four comes from our spirit teachers. The keywords for this card are tedium, disappointment, emptiness, frustration. Life is relatively stable and calm now. And yes, you've achieved a certain degree of predictability and comfort on a day-to-day -day basis. However, something is lacking in the way of fulfillment. Your spirit teachers gather in response to this emptiness. They gently remind you that there's more to your life than you are currently expressing and are calling on you to remember your soul commitments of purpose and contribution to your fellow human beings. They confirm what you already know in your heart. Focusing on your interests alone will not fill your void. Trust these beautiful guides as they lovingly urge you to open your heart and share your time and gifts with others. They wisely counsel you that the restlessness, emptiness, and boredom you feel isn't the result of something missing from your life or something you've yet to attain, but rather it's the reaction to the unexpressed talent, creativity, and love in your heart, things that your soul longs to give. Your spirit teachers invite you to take advantage of your present peace and certainty and use your good fortune to involve yourself with those who are still struggling. For example, take a friend to lunch, help an elderly neighbor, volunteer at a literacy support organization, or spend more time with lonely relatives. Your spirit teacher's message, give more and your emptiness will subside. Mars is asking us to express what we have an abundance of. Because by expressing what comes easy to us, what we already have an abundance of, will help us feel more fulfillment in our life. And I'm waiting for more depth to come of this because this feels very surface level so far. But what this card is talking about is that it feels like when we think we're lacking something, we might have to bring more in, right? I have to make more money. I need more toys. I need more relationships. I need more friends. But what it could be is that you're just not opening the, the giving part of yourself enough. So you don't feel like a true human <laughs> because you're trying to fill yourself up. But the part of being a human that you might be lacking is giving, sharing. And... <laughs> You know who you are. There's a client that I, we talk about this stuff all the Okay, Christine. Yeah. Oh, no, this was my card. You were on my mind. And I, I'm sure that other people will relate to this. And this card can also bring up some guilt because, my gosh, like, I feel like if I'm supposed to be giving to the world, I have to be doing this grandiose action. It has to be ending world hunger and feeding the poor every day and doing these things that are going to benefit the whole community. So what I really want to pay attention to in this card is that when it comes to sharing your gifts, your gifts are meant to be easy. It's meant to be so easy and so, I don't want to say mindless because it comes with intention, but so like non-effort that you can overthink or overlook it and say, oh, I'm not doing anything. So let me go back to that sound bed example and how that relates to this card. The guilt came when the sound bed came and I was like, but I'm done sharing my space and I'm done healing people physically with my hands and with, you know, time and space in that manner. So I bought this bed in order to help people. Now, how the hell am I helping people with this bed? This card is talking about expressing yourself, sharing what you have to give, 
what I have to give is astrological knowledge and life wisdom and stories about my life that can speak in metaphor to all of you guys. And I don't want to, like... I'm still so cautious about tooting my own horn, but like you guys obviously keep coming back. You guys obviously appreciate what I'm doing. So it doesn't need to be me sharing this part of my life, right? I don't need to have all of you over at my house to sit on this sound bed in order to benefit from it. So what I'm saying is that it's, it's more about doing what comes easily to you. Obviously, I can talk about myself all day <laughs> and listen to you guys comment about it. And I'm helping, right? right? I'm helping. So in my mind, this feels so second nature. I have to remind myself that this is of service. This is beneficial because for me, it seems like I'm just living my life. And that's what service is supposed to feel like. Sir, you are blessed with a gift that it's so easy for you. It's second nature because it's who you are. And the more you align with your highest self, the more that gift is just going to radiate from you. Because life is meant to be easy. Life isn't meant to be a struggle. Life is, we're here to figure out what it is that comes so easily to us that is beneficial. And then it's up to us to train ourselves to remember that this is actually serving people. Just because I already have it, doesn't mean that everyone has it. So that's what I wanted to say about that boredom card. So if, if you're feeling a lack of fulfillment in your life, start looking for what do I enjoy doing with my time? How could anyone benefit from these things that I'm doing? How am I sharing this with the world? Um, and honestly, these days, like having a... I kind of hate saying this because I'm in that weird generation. Having a social media presence and just talking about yourself, sharing your experience, it's the energy of storytelling. Storytelling has been around forever, but now we can use this social media platform to listen to or to, to speak to a wider audience. You know, we don't have the same tribal gatherings that we used to where the storytelling would occur. How much have you learned? just from watching other people's experience, from hearing other people's stories, you can do the same. Tam says, great to hear this message. Sounds like it could be a gift such as our physical experience, or physical appearance. That's right, Becca. Fian, gifts are to be easy. Wow, what a revelation. Gifts give to ourselves. Service serves others. Wonderful, Greg says, bingo. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So what else is Mars asking us to express? We're going to be here late today, guys. I hope you don't have any appointments after this. Uh, this is being recorded. Let me just double check because sometimes it messes up. Yep, this is being recorded. This will be available on my YouTube channel afterwards. We're about to pull card three. This spread gave us four cards and I really do want to get to the last one. So, man. What else is Mars asking us to express while he's in Pisces? Card number 50 is self-control. Oh, here was that four again, guys. If, if card number four resonated with you, I know a few of you brought that up. Card number four was here as well. Thank you, Amber, for your donation. I, I really appreciate the energy exchange. <clears throat> Mars is asking us to express self-control, and this message comes from our higher self. The keywords are restraint, detachment, composure, relaxation. Your higher self is advising you to keep your emotions in check through these times of change and transition. Be on guard as well against being manipulated emotionally by the fear and drama of those around you. Excuse me, someone just let that go. Change is in the air, and the uncertainty at hand is stirring up a lot of anxiety and insecurity. Recognize the potential stress and choose to brave the volatile storm by remaining cool, calm, and collected. Whatever you do, don't allow yourself to succumb to the seductive, an addictive appeal of high drama 
as a way of expending the excess adrenaline coursing through your veins. Go for a run or work out at the gym. Use your anxiety physically rather than emotionally and protect yourself against the fear-provoking actions of others. Yes, it's difficult to face the unknown, but your higher self calmly assures you that no matter what challenges you encounter, you can handle everything beautifully if you remain detached, relaxed, and grounded. Your higher self's message is stay cool. And this is a little bit paradoxical because we said, what is Mars asking us to express? And what I got from this card is that Mars doesn't want you to react to everyone else's shit. Mars doesn't want you to say, oh my gosh, this person's afraid of this, so I need to be afraid of this. Oh my gosh, the TV is saying we should be afraid of this right now. We need to prepare. We need to look out. We need to be on the lookout for all these people trying to ruin our lives. If they didn't tell you that, would you still be feeling this anxiety? If you weren't told the story that there's this scary thing going on somewhere outside of your life, if that message never came to you, would you be feeling that same anxiety? I feel like Mars is here almost guarding you from external stimuli, right? External. If you, if you want to be scared about that, you could be scared about that. You could feel anxious about that. That's cool. It doesn't have anything to do with my life until I invite it into my life. So Mars is asking us to express our own emotions from our own lives. April, this is a great reminder as we head to the November election in the U.S. Yes. Yes. If you guys haven't watched my video on YouTube, I put it up, I don't remember, February, middle, middle of February. It's called Points of Disagreement with the Mainstream Spiritual Community. I don't remember exactly what I talked about in that. Um, it was just, it was off Insight Timer. I just recorded a video on how I disagree with a lot of the mainstream spiritual community. It speaks a lot to what this card is talking about. How if you let your external reality influence the inside, you're living from the outside in. You're gonna, you're giving the world <laughs> power over you. The key is living from the inside out, getting control over what's going on in here by saying that doesn't impact me unless I invite it to impact me. It's helped. It's helped a lot. All right. And then the last one that's for all of us, last one from this deck, and then we're going to pull from a second deck. But this one came out face up, so I just feel like this is for all of us because this card also came up in the, the I think the last time I used this deck, you know, I, Mars is asking us to express our psychic awareness. It's card number 47, and this message comes from our divine soul. The keywords are clairsentience, clairvoyance, reception, telepathy. Oh, it's the book. <laughs> I the, the pages of the book are moving in this lower corner and I thought there was like a ghost in my room for a second. Oh, psychic awareness. Ooh, am I seeing something? Your divine soul is awakening and with it, your psychic abilities are coming alive. More evolved and specific than basic intuition, your psychic faculties are giving you access to the fourth dimension and are coming into contact with discarnate enlightened helpers who can assist and guide you in beautiful ways. You may start accessing divine music or tap into new healing energies. You may also receive telepathic messages and have clairvoyant visions. Heed your newly aroused psychic faculties and don't doubt the specific and profound transmissions flowing to you. Record your dreams, believe in your hunches, and accept the symbols and signals being relayed to you from the psychic realm. Trust your vibes and embrace your psychic channels fully. What they're communicating is essential to fulfilling your purpose. Ask your divine soul to lead you. Its message, embrace and trust what you receive. Of course, Mars and Pisces is the best time to express our psychic awareness. 
you can see the full picture, you know what's coming in. Maybe it's because you feel like you're not ready for it. You're not ready to celebrate all of these knowings that you have, all of these messages that you're receiving. If you don't feel like you're worthy of being a psychic being, they're not gonna come to you and you're not gonna believe them. Kiana, I love this deck, me too. Me too. So this card does kind of culminate the whole thing, right? I already talked about how if you poo-poo on these psychic abilities, you're not gonna be able to use them, right? Perhaps it's your psychic awareness, it's downloads that you receive that you're meant to share with other people because it might be coming easily. Mm. And I can see why sometimes like it's that, that whole control, that whole illusion of control right from the beginning of this course or from this, this talk. So when you receive a message that you know is for someone else and you share it with them, and then they don't follow your advice, eventually you're just like, well, what's the point of sharing anyway, right? But we can't control people, right? We can't tell people what to do. But if we receive a message that we know they need to hear, you can still plant the seed and then release control. Say, I said what I was meant to say, wipe your hands of it, and that's it, right? And the more you learn to practice self-control, the more you learn to not let the external world impact your internal world, you'll start to appreciate more about how messages come as like a metaphor for you so that when you do have these psychic insights that you want to share with other people, accept that it's simply an external message that's a metaphor for them. It doesn't have to equal your life to their life. Does that make sense? You should be sharing. I hate that word should. Um, you're meant to be sharing your psychic insights, but it's all about releasing that control of what happens after you share it. So perfectly needed today. Thank you, Tasha. Thank you so much, Christine, for your donation. Oh, yeah, that's it. Um, I'm going to pull one more card from one more deck. We're going to ask a deck I haven't used in quite a while. The, beast, the Illustrated Bestiary Oracle Cards. I want to ask which animal can guide us through all of this expression that we just talked about. Sharing our insights is part of our life purpose. Yes. But there's that fine line between sharing and preaching, okay? And the preaching comes when you think that they have to do what you know. It's different. It's different. Feel free to share and advise them to take what resonates and leave the rest. Just because it's life-changing for you doesn't mean they're in that same time or same place in their life. But you could be planting a seed that they'll remember when it is that time and that place for their life. April pulled the celebration card for the weekly spread for how your spirit guides speak to you. Love the confirmation. I love it. Violet, thank you so much for your donation. Feel free to send your energy, guys, into this deck asking which animal can guide us through this expression. Thank you so much, Violet, for your donation as well. If you guys are enjoying and receiving the gifts that I'm sharing, I really do appreciate your energetic exchanges through donations. Um, I wanted to mention as well, I know that there's been some funny business with how much tech companies are putting their hands into all this stuff. And I really don't want to make a big deal out of it. It's something that's out of my control. But I did just want to mention that if you have been neglecting to give your money to the tech company, and that's why you haven't been donating, um, if you'd like to donate off of this platform, head into my link tree. There's a link for my PayPal store in there if you'd like to share an alternative way. Just throwing that out there. I really do appreciate um, the exchange. This does fill me up. But it's not, like, I still have to support myself in life, you know what I'm saying? So that's it. I, I really appreciate you guys being here. I really appreciate sharing this stuff with you guys. We got two animal cards, too. This is a big, a big reading today. 
If you haven't yet followed me on Insight Timer, please consider doing so. I come here most Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, depending on what's going on in the sky. Um, I always talk astrology and then pull some oracle cards, and we can see how concise these messages usually are. Um, I post all of these replays to my YouTube channel, so feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch all the replays there. Um, I do a whole bunch of stuff. I have group, group work that just started. Information is on my link tree. It's in my Patreon. Um, I'm starting to put a lot of courses out for you guys, so keep an eye out for those. You can follow me. You can engage with me in lots of different ways. It all comes down to my link tree if you want to um, see what I'm up to. Thank you, Jackie. I sent you <laughs> my carrier pigeon. <laughs> Thanks, Bonnie. Thank you, Becky, for your donation. I appreciate you. Carrie says, because you were meant to. What were you referencing? All right, so apparently the universe just wants to scream at us today. We have six cards. I normally come on here with four. <laughs> All right. Um, which animal can guide us through this expression of celebrating what's coming to us, sharing our gifts with others, and not allowing other people to control our emotions? Which animal can guide us? The sea eagle. And the message is renew your life. A medieval tale teaches that when Old Eagle can no longer spot Pike jumping in the sea, when her wings feel heavy and slow, she remembers the lore of incarnation. This mystery is passed down to those of her kind who, as fledglings, are strong enough to look straight into the fiery sun. As the ancient knowing rises in her soul, Eagle finds a well of clear, clean water. With that well, as her tether to earth, she leaps skyward and sunward, flying up till her feathers sear and the fog is burned from her eyes. Then she plummets back to earth, into the depths of the well's water, emerging renewed. Eagle reminds us that life moves in cycles. When you get tired and burned out, Draw on the wisdom of your soul to find renewal. This message is on page number 33, so I always love those, those angel numbers. So which animal can guide us through this expression? You might feel just completely done, like you've been trying so hard. You've been working so hard, and you're just waiting for these blessings that are on the other side, right? And this card is reminding you just to keep going. You got it. And when you reach your peak, when you reach the end, when you reach the point of surrender, right? Especially Mars moving into Pisces, that, that still does hold the energy of surrender. Dive into your emotions. Feel it. Feel what you are feeling. Feel what's coming from your life and not from the fear and worries of others. And trust, you got to trust, draw on spirit, use your psychic awareness, ask for messages about how do I know when it's time to surrender? How do I know if it's meant for me to keep continuing to push? Renewal is coming. Everything's a cycle. Nothing is permanent. And the other animal that wants to help Whoa. <laughs> uh, the other animal that wants to guide us through this expression is the spring pepper. And the message is evolve into your next becoming. So even before I read this card, I'm just going to make note that this card is about working until burnout and then diving into water. And then here is a water creature talking about new beginnings. So, duh. <laughs> ah, big name, small frog. So, so small, in fact, you may think you don't know this critter at all. But if you've cracked a window on an early spring evening, 
you've probably heard the peeper chorus chirping of metamorphosis and growing into their fullest potential. These wee frogs remind you to embrace your innate ability to evolve, especially when you think you've forgotten how. Peepers start life as tadpoles, then grow legs, and that's just part of their magic. Peeper also has a backup plan for breathing. He can take in oxygen through his skin. Call on him when you have forgotten how to breathe and life feels impossible, or when you need to grow a new set of legs to carry you into your next becoming. So this animal brings us a message that you always have what you need to move on to the next step. You're just learning. It's just growing pains, right? You think it think it feels good to grow a pair of legs? I don't think so. But you always have alternate options. You can always breathe through your skin. You don't always have to breathe through your nose. Oh my gosh, my embodied astrology people, my lunar events people, that's exactly what we were talking about yesterday. Utilizing this seemingly negative pattern in a new way, right? If you can't breathe through your mouth because you're underwater, how can you breathe through your skin? You're using the same technique, but in a different place. I feel like this whole reading is saying that by celebrating what you know you deserve, believing that you deserve it, sharing your joy from that celebration externally because it's easy, and knowing when to close the door and say, those feelings are your feelings. I don't need to take them on. I don't need to be afraid of what you're afraid of. By doing that, with the help of your psychic awareness, using your psychic awareness as a guide, you're, you're going to renew your life and evolve into your new being. That's, that's the long and short of it. It's going to be difficult to close a chapter because you're so used to it. But the more you rely on your psychic awareness, right? The more you rely on knowing that you have the answers, knowing that the plan is available for you. You just have to ask and trust and believe. We're all going to be so ready for that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction at the end of April. Post-eclipse season. I see so much good coming for all of us. Um, you've been trying really hard, so good job. <laughs> good job. Thank you so much. Yvonne says, thank you. Was feeling down for two days and ready to throw in the towel. I will not throw in the towel. Yes. April pulled this card this week too. Interesting. Um, yeah, when it comes to the pattern of when it's time to effort and when it's time to surrender, it's so delicate and I'm still learning it, right? I'm not going to pretend that I'm perfect. I'm still learning it. And it, it, you have to come to your breaking point until you feel like I've literally, literally done everything I can do. I have no more options. I have nothing else to give. Completely burning up. And then you surrender. You dive into the ocean. You say, you know what? Whatever is meant to be is meant to be. And that, that beauty of surrender and trust is when you start to regrow. Tasha, I feel like I just had a private reading. Thank you. <laughs> April, as I have this deck sharing journal prompts from Sea Eagle, what in your life needs to be burned off? What's clouding your vision? What's keeping you from seeing clearly and flying true? Thank you, April. Thank you, Tracy, for your donation. Christine says we'll donate to you directly. Thank you. Angel, that's dead on from yesterday. Help me put yesterday in perspective. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carrie says we're magical. We can do anything we want to. We just need to trust our instincts and intuition. Yes, and you can do so by following your human design authority and strategy. I've been uh, learning the human design for quite some time, and I, I drop it in when it's necessary. I'm not ready to full-on teach it yet, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know. If not, maybe that's a seed. That is uh, time for you to plant and see where that goes. Thank you guys so much for being here today. This was a beautiful reading. This was an amazing reading. Um, the replay of the video will be on YouTube later today. Search my name, subscribe there. The text update of all the cards 
Bonnie helps me in our spiritual community, which is the group that I have on Insight Timer. So hop in that group, join it. Bonnie will put the text update there later. Um, in our spiritual community, I think two days ago, I posted the link to my new Aries course that's available on Insight Timer. So feel free to check that out. I'll be back on Monday to discuss the Libra lunar eclipse. So big things are coming and you get to decide how beautiful they are. So I invite you to celebrate everything that's lovely in your life right now. Sending love to all. Namaste. I hope that video was just as insightful for you as it was for all of us. Darla and I really appreciate you being here with me. Thank you for liking this video, sharing it with a friend who you think would benefit, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Also, drop a comment and let us know what you got from this video. What was your biggest insight or takeaway? If you want to see what else I'm working on, click on my link tree. It's right underneath this YouTube video. We'll see you next time. Take care.